Welcome to church and, and a warm welcome to those who will be joining us online now or later today. We'll have our first meeting. Ourselves. 
in your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our Lord. Amen. The Almighty God will forgive all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in, in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We come to the time of lighting the Advent candle and after that I will say some prayers for us. Can I invite Robert please? Let us pray. God our Father, you spoke to the prophets of old of a Saviour who will be, bring peace. You help them to spread the joyful message of his coming kingdom. Help us as we prepare to celebrate Christ's birth and to share with those around us the good news of your power and love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is the light coming into the world. Amen. Thank you. Now let's pray for all the gifts we've received today. Today's our toy service. Uh, I believe these gifts are going to those who are less privileged. So let us pray. Lord Jesus, we pray for all children whose lives are painful or difficult this Christmas, for those without homes or families who care for them, for refugees who have lost everything, for children who have lost family members or friends in acts of war or violence. We give thanks for the work of the Children's Society as they provide and hope for thousands of children and teenagers who have been hurt or neglected. We bless these gifts as we have given them. We pray that they may be used for those who are left less privileged. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Another prayer. Let us pray. We call it for today. Blessed Lord, who have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning and wisdom, grant that we in such wise hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them that by patience and comfort of thy holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of the everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Mark chapter 1, reading from verses 1. The beginning of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophets, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. 
John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness proclaiming the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. From the whole Judea countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locust and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than me is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the top of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. One of the doctrines of the New Testament is the teaching of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is a gift God wants everybody to have. Jesus said, that it is the promise from the Father to all who are determined to follow Christ and fulfill their part in the kingdom mission to spread the gospel, the gift of the Holy Spirit. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, life can be very frustrating but with the Holy Spirit, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, all things are possible. So what does it mean to be filled by the Holy Spirit? Well, it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit and overflow in your life and into your spirit. When a person receives the Holy Spirit, it's like an empty container being filled with fresh water. That is what it means to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is your helper. He gives you strength and ability and he teaches you everything there is to know or you need to know about life. Jesus said to his friends, I will pray for the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor receives him. But you know him, for he dwells in you. Jesus calls the Holy Spirit here a helper. In other translation, the word counselor is used. Jesus says that the Holy Spirit is a helper. A counselor, like Jesus himself, has been for his disciples. The title counselor means one called alongside someone to help. The role of the Holy Spirit is to strengthen and comfort you in times of difficulty and distress. Another word used for the Holy Spirit is advocate. To publicly support or suggest an idea or development or a way of doing things. That is what the Holy Spirit is to us. He suggests ideas. He suggests the things that can help us develop in life and he shows us the way of doing things in our lives. In a judicial sense, an advocate is a lawyer who defends you in a law court. 
So the Holy Spirit defends us as we go through life. My little children, Jesus said, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. But if any of you sin, we have an advocate in heaven, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. So Jesus is our advocate in heaven and he intercedes for us. You know this Holy Spirit, you know him because he dwells in you. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives you strength and abilities in order to achieve the things you need to achieve in life. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and into the ends of the world. Jesus here is leaving his disciples. He has been killed, buried and rose again. He's going to heaven and his disciples are terrified. A bit like I'm terrified about rats and mouse. They are terrified about going to spread the gospel of the kingdom. And Jesus says to them, look, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. The word used here for power means strength, ability. So you will receive the ability to be able to do things when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. The Holy Spirit, therefore, gives you strength, ability to do all things through Christ who strengthens you. I baptize with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit teaches you everything you need to know. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you everything I have taught you. The Holy Spirit reveals to us the things about life. In fact, the Holy Spirit revealed to us things about ourselves that we never know existed. God has revealed the Holy Spirit to us. Yes, the Spirit of Truth. Because this Spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep secrets of God. The reason why people struggle in life is because they neither know the Holy Spirit nor believe in Him or even accept Jesus Christ. For us Christians, some, sometimes we struggle because we don't read the Bible, let alone understand what the Bible says. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, we need to determine to have a quiet time each day of our life. It may be morning, afternoon, or evening. Find a time in the day where you sit and read one page of the Bible, one chapter, or maybe a couple of verses, because in the pages of the scriptures, we meet the Holy Spirit, and He reveals the deep things about ourselves, the deep things about our partners, the deep things about our friends to us. An interesting story in the 8th chapter of the book of Acts. The Ethiopian eunuch has gone to Jerusalem to worship. On his way going back to Ethiopia, sitting on his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah and he had no clue what he was reading about. Guess what? The Holy Spirit has prompted the Apostle Philip to go to this man. So 
So here comes Philip, got alongside this man who was reading the Bible, who couldn't understand what he's reading. And Philip explained the scriptures to him, starting from the Old Testament, taught him about Jesus Christ. And the guy asked Philip to baptize him. So the Ethiopian you know then was baptized. So when we read the scriptures, when we seek to pray, we need to be mindful and invite the Holy Spirit to fill us and reveal the things of God to us. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Every individual in this world have been blessed with the Holy Spirit. Because we are all created in the image of God. When he created us, he breathed into our nostrils and we became a human being. So be aware of the Holy Spirit in your life. Most often than not, people say, oh, something told me to ring my cousin. Something told me to call my friend at work. Oh, something told me to go and collect my child today earlier than normal time. I want to suggest to you or submit to you that this something you are describing is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. God speaks to us all the time. He does that through the Holy Spirit. The problem is, or the issue is, we don't always pay attention to what God is saying. So be encouraged today. For you have been baptized in water and you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit lives in you. Amen. Let's respond to the sermon by saying the creed. We believe in one God, the Father of one, maker of heaven and earth. All things we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten of men, of one being with the Father, to whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven and was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and a conscious pilot. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we pray for all children whose lives are painful and difficult. We pray that you will be with them and as we have given our gift today, that they may be of use, useful to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord Jesus, strengthen all Christian people by your Spirit, that we may live as a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to the praise of Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Bless our bishops and priests and deacons. Bless all ministers of your church that by faithful proclamation of your word, 
we may be built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets into a holy temple in Lord. Lord, in your mercy, in our heart. Empower us by the gift of your Holy Spirit and life giving Spirit that we may be transformed into the likeness of Christ to your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Give to the world and its people the peace that comes from above, that they may find Christ, way of freedom and life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hold in your embrace all who witness to your love in the service of the poor and the needy, all who minister to the sick and dying, and all who bring light to those in darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Send your healing hands and heal all those whose lives are scarred by sin or disfigured, disfigured by pain, that raised from death to life in Christ, their sorrow may return into eternal joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Remember in your mercy all those who have died and gone before us. We pray for those who have passed away that you may receive them in your eternal glory. Preserve in your faith your servants on earth. Guide us to your kingdom and grant us your peace at all times. We pray for families who are grieving, those who are preparing to say goodbye to their loved ones. We pray that you will strengthen and comfort all those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. So, Father, we commend ourselves into your loving care. We pray that you will strengthen us by your Spirit to live in love and peace with all. Surrounded by the prayers of all the saints, we commend the whole human family into your loving care. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Let us offer one another the sign of peace by waving to each other. This is the time where we normally uh, take our offerings. We are collecting donations for crisis, uh, for crisis, uh, crisis, the charity crisis today. Uh, if you are giving a donation, would you please be kind to put them in the, uh, the gift aid uh, envelope so we can collect gift aid on it. Uh, thank you for doing that. Uh, for those of you who give. Uh, through the various means that you do, we thank God for your life and we please remind those who uh, want to give that there is a collection plate as you go out today. So please um, carefully give your donations. Thank you. We will have our next in.
your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the whole world to open for us the way of salvation. Confident that your promise will be fulfilled, we now watch for the day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we join our voice with the angels and archangels and we pour the company of heaven to proclaim your glorious, your glory forever present you and say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heights. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the heights. We praise you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine our poor may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. Taking bread, he praised you and broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take it, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you this bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. I said through him our great high priest, this is our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and in him and with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and power and glory be yours forever and ever. Amen. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. We do not presume to come to this table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, 
but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as we gather the crown from under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. I'm going to give you Holy Communion in one kind. I'm going to have to drink the wine on your behalf. You have a very happy and cheerful breakfast this afternoon.
we say together the prayer of the communion. Almighty God, we thank you for giving us with the body and the blood of your Son Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies, even in sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Just before the final hymn and the blessing, notices. Well, um, we are back in church again. As I said from the beginning, I think that, I think and believe that there's a lot to thank God for. And certainly, if not for anything, we are alive and our friends, our families are well. Uh, not so much for those who have lost loved ones. Um, I, I recognize that and, um, and I pray for those who are mourning. Yeah. But there's, there's a lot to thank God for. We are back in church. Let's look after ourselves, wash our hands, use face covering, obey the government protocols, and I believe we, we will be fine. Okay? Um, our news sheet is on the Facebook page and on the web page. Uh, as I said just before communion, we are collecting for uh, crisis, the charity crisis, and so please uh, cheerfully give your donation to that charity. We will continue to hold our weekly services. There will be Thursday Holy Communion at 9.15 every week, and our Sunday services at 9 a.m. and 10.30. From time to time, you see me on Tuesdays, uh, you know, with my smiley face here and there. Uh, that also will be on. Uh, so, you know, be encouraged. Read your Bible, pray every day. And be cheerful. <laughs> I'll find out.
that this something is telling you to do something, then please remember that it is the Holy Spirit prompting you to take certain action that might probably save a life. A blessing. May God himself, the God of peace, make you perfect and holy and keep you safe and blameless that you may reign with him in glory. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.